Yeah, and thankfully, this one delivered. Okay, I didn't get completely through this game. I did start playing it when I got it, and I think it's a dumb argument which version is better, you know, and I think it's more or less a matter of opinion whether you like this version or the Switch version. I mean, that's like debating on which version of Twilight Princess is better, GameCube or Nintendo Wii. I mean, yeah, I know. People like the GameCube, and this is obviously did the same thing, transition from one Nintendo console to the other. Except, obviously, with the Twilight Princess, you know, the only major difference is that Link holds a sword in his left hand, and, you know, traditionally, like in all the other past installments on the GameCube version and, well, the Wii games, it's the first time you ever see Link hold the sword in his right hand. Yeah. Well, in this game, they stuck to right hand, apparently, as you can tell, and, well, yeah, obviously, they promised that this game, after tons and tons of delays and waits and... Honest to God, I think I've almost lost faith that this game is going to ever release after years of waiting and anticipation. And people even said, oh, it's got cancelled for the Wii U and it's only going to be released for the next-gen Nintendo console. And I was like, are you kidding me? But no, I heard otherwise that it's going to be released for both, just like Twilight Princess, and yeah, it's great. So far, uh, I mean, it's an open-world game, so... Yeah, it's a lot of figuring out, a lot of new different ideas, like different weapons you can pick up and use from different enemies. So it's a lot of problem solving, a lot of strategy. Um, yeah, you got the TV off mode, as I said before. I'm really getting crazy with this. But you have to choose whether you want it on the gamepad or TV. Um, of course, it's only text dialogue for the most part. And, well, you get helped out by this bearded fellow who helps you out through the whole entire map. I mean, the map is huge in this world so far as I saw. It's just incredible. The graphics are great. It's all about survival. So, yeah, you may argue it's more of a survival game trying to figure out how to make your way through the cold without proper apparel. And eventually you do upgrade and stuff. So, it's a lot to do in this game. And you have to obviously decide on which dungeon you want to beat first. So, yep. I'm glad Nintendo took their time with this one because it definitely paid off. Number three. Super Mario Maker. Okay, I know. Another Mario game. You're like, what? Well, come on. I think you can cut this one some slack, people. This... You may argue... Okay, I know I reviewed this one, and I'm sounding like a broken record on this. And you could argue it's more of an app than a game, but there's plenty of gameplay involved with it, too. But because it's more or less a Maker game, that's why I find it a little bit different than an adventure. As you know, it takes the idea of, you know, being able to create courses from... Mario Bros. 1, Mario Bros. 3 from NES, and Mario World from Super NES, and as well as Mario Bros. U from, of course, this console, the Wii U, you know, from this game. So, yeah, there's plenty to do, plenty of objects and enemies, placements, and plenty of things in different types of worlds, like the overhead world, underground, castle, in the sky, and, well, you know, plenty of things in underwater, too, as well. So. Yeah, there's plenty of things you can use, and you may argue, is that it? Well, apparently, yes. You could argue there's some things missing, like slopes, and... Well, it would be nice to have the seven Koopa kids, and... Yeah, I mean, this would make great for some DLC. They did add a few things, like those big spike things that come down at you that you probably saw in Mario World. It would be nice to see the football players from Mario World, or... Maybe even the hammerhead throwing costume from Mario 3 or so, a frog suit or something, so... Yeah, not, nothing's been announced so far, and I'm not really surprised since the Switch, I guess, is what Nintendo has most of their focus on. But aside from bashing this game, I should more or less praise it, because, yeah, there's plenty to do. You can go crazy with these courses. I mean, people make the craziest things on this game. I mean, you can put things on conveyor belts. You can make things really big, like giant King Bowsers. You can get Bowser Jr. You can get, I mean, make giant Goombas, Koopas put things underwater. You can even get things that you haven't seen in, like, the first installments. Like, you never seen the you know, ghost booze on Mario 1. Yeah, there you go. You can have them in there. Or anything from that, that game. I mean, it's incredible. Yes, of course, you can even get the haunted house stages as well. I mean, it's just... The ideas are endless in this game. And yes, I know it has a bit of a learning curve, but hey, getting to learn this game is just half the fun right there. So you gotta really look more or less play around with it, and I know when the game first came out, it was ridiculous with the whole nine-day span, you can't get everything unlocked until you, you know, played it for nine straight days, which you can cheat and change the date on your Wii U, but thankfully the, some of the updates that came later on changed it, and they thought, yeah, that's pretty ridiculous, and I couldn't agree much more with that. And, yeah, 
Of course, you can get other nods to, you know, the previous Mario games, like, as well with Mario Paint. Yeah, but of course, when you load your stage in online, and of course, you can create an insanely hard stage, but to be able to do so, you've got to be able to play through and beat it. So that's fair, I think. And yeah, you get the loading music from Mario Paint. Hell, there's even a secret thing if you know how to do it right. I'm not going to explain it, just watch my review of this game, where you can actually get the Fly Swatter game from Mario Paint. Pretty cool, but not quite as good as the original Mario Paint version. It's slightly altered. And, well, if you if you don't like just simply making levels, you can get, of course, the Mario Challenge, you know, the 100 Mario Challenge to be exact, and, of course, play some levels online that, yeah, people create. So, lot to do in this game, plenty of challenge and frustration, and plenty of crazy stuff to do in this game. And, yes, there's also a 3DS version that came out, but come on, this game came out a year before that one. I guess unless you don't own a Wii U and you only own a 3DS, which you can, of course, upload stages online, and I have heard got good reviews, but you want my advice? Another reason to get a Wii U, which makes great use of the touchscreen pad? Well, this is your answer right here. Number 2, Bayonetta 2, yeah. Okay, I haven't really talked about much about this game, but all I could say is, well, it's awesome. Yeah, I should say superbly awesome. All I it's obviously about a witch who gets powers, and she's trying to stop evil from conquering the world. So, yeah, it's, it's a typical hack and slash em type of game, and, yeah, it's great. It's got a lot of adventure, a lot of, you know, yeah, it's got a little bit of violence and cursing in it as well. It isn't ever mature rated for a stupid reason. And, yeah, while the first game was obviously released on multiple consoles, the Xbox 360 and PS3, this sequel is apparently only a Wii U exclusive for whatever reason. But, hey, it's just another reason to buy a Wii U. And, yeah, great third-party support, right? I mean, it's made by Sega. Isn't that something, right? So, yeah. Not much to say there. It's just kind of a shame that, well... The Sonic game, Sonic Boom to be exact, didn't work out too well, and yeah, Sonic Lost World was pretty mediocre, but you want the best reason that Sega threw in their support for Nintendo Wii U? Well, this is your answer right here. And, yep, we got boss fights, different moves, upgrades, learning different moves, the load screens are fun, and, well, hell, if you even buy this version for, well, I'm sure it's much cheaper than 60 bucks at this point, you can actually get a bonus game of the first one included. I mean... At this rate, it's probably a steal right there, so all I could say is definitely go for it. Alright, well, until, before I get to number one, I'll throw in a few honorable mentions here and there. Starting with, well, Mario Brothers U, as I mentioned before, so yeah, you know what, screw it. I'm going to go with more than one per franchise, and to keep it short, sweet to the point, I reviewed this one, there's not much to say, it's a side-scrolling game. I know I kind of bashed it a little bit, but... It's just because it's exhausted before. I mean, we've seen this on a DS, 3DS, the Wii, and even on this console. There's not much to say. You get all the familiar costumes in there. It's all about rescuing Princess Peach, playing as Mario and Luigi and the Toads. You get the, you know, you multiplayer where you can play simultaneously through levels. It's all the same stuff. There's some new levels and elements in there which are pretty cool. You get the seven Koopa kids that you fight against after the end of each world, and you get the acorn costume, which I have to say is kind of a little disappointing. I kind of prefer the propeller costume, which is in this game too as well, but eh, it's just not as good as Mario 3D World. But, and of course there's also, if you get the downloadable content, or if you got the exclusive one that I got with the Wii U, you get new Super Luigi U, which may seem like a gimmicky DLC, but I think it's more or less challenging than this version. And yeah, it's more or less a, a crying attempt for Luigi, that sidekick brother of his, to get more attention, but the levels are actually surprisingly a lot more challenging this time around. Yeah, there's tougher time constraints, there's tougher levels, and yeah, they can get really challenging. So, yeah. Don't overlook this one just because it's overshadowed by the uh, Super Mario 3D World game. It's still worth at least one play. It's still fun. It's Mario. That's how you do it. NES Remix Pack. Okay, in case you're wondering what this is, I didn't know what it was at first when I first heard about it. It was originally DLC because, well, there's NES Remix 1 and 2. And I thought, what, is this Remix music? No, it's actually a set of retro games or well, trials that you try out of a bunch of retro games from the NES. 
and well, obviously that's why it's called NES Remix Pack. And yes, there's also a version on 3DS, but I, again, I don't think it's as good as this one. It's probably inferior, but tons of games you can choose from, and it's all challenges and stuff like from Mario 1, 2, 3, Mario Lost Levels, um, classics like Kirby, Zelda, Zelda 2, and Icarus, Donkey Kong arcade games like Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., and so forth. I mean, the, the list goes on. And it's all just challenges. Some of them start out easy and are basic, and then some get insanely hard. Not only that, you need to complete challenges, not only with a lot of perfection, but under certain time constraints to unlock more and more challenges and games. You get more games unlocked, and then not only you get the basic games, you also get hacker versions of games, which are basically characters thrown into other games, and games with crazy stuff thrown in. Just watch my review on this game, as I said before, with a lot of these games, and you'll know what I'm talking about. I mean, yeah, you ever wanted to see Link in the Mario Brothers, or Kirby in Mario Brothers one? Yeah, well, there you go. This is your chance right here. There's some crazy ones, like Mario's, you know, not being able to stop. Just keep running, and you gotta keep jumping. Or, um, how about Kid Icarus with a different character, where it zooms out, or, yeah, some of these levels just go crazy, like with Wrecking Crew, where it just zooms out, and Sometimes the levels, the lights, you know, the screen goes dark and you have to keep running and all that stuff. It just, the ideas are endless, but crazy. But, a lot of great challenges, but if you're not familiar with a lot of these retro NES games, then it's not really for you. But otherwise, I would definitely check it out. It's well worth it. And yes, it was also originally DLC at first, but i go for this one because it's probably a lot cheaper than that. Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. Yeah, well... There ain't much to say about this game. I should have mentioned in Mario 3D World that this was actually teased in that game. Yeah, as a bonus stage, and well, they made a whole game about it, as you guess. And you're probably wondering, what? Really? It seemed like a gimmicky concept, I'll admit, because yeah, Toad is more or less an annoying side character, and some people like him, I respect that, and this game, it did seem like that. But after a while of playing it, I really enjoyed it. It does borrow a lot of elements from Mario 3D World, I should have mentioned before, like the touchscreen thing, you know, that you have to move some of the, you know, support, you know, things to walk on. Of course, you get the, uh, having to move the camera and everything around, so it requires a lot of concentration and thinking and problem solving, which is great. Yeah, I know you can't jump, and yes, I know it's annoying that things may get in your way and try to block you and everything, but that's the whole point of it. It's challenging, and it's, most importantly, fun. There's tons of levels in this game, and just when you think the game is over, well, you're only about halfway there. You not only get Toad in this game, but you also get to play as Toadette. So, yep, it's all about getting those crystals and getting through each level one by one. And, of course, occasionally getting a boss fight at the end of each level. So, yep, may seem gimmicky, but I think it worked out, and I think it's very underrated. Nintendo Lands. Yep, another one that I reviewed. I might as well stop saying that at this point, but... Yep, it's a bunch of mini-games, as you'd expect. Similar to, like, something out of Wii Sports, or Wii Sports Resort, whatever the hell you, which one you prefer. But this one's all about taking the you know, classic Nintendo franchises and, well, mixing them all together and putting a twist to them with a bunch of mini-games. Some of them are multiplayer only, some of them are one or two players, some of them are, well, strictly only one player. So, depending on which game you choose, there's lots of them, and I'll, well, I'll try to scratch the surface as much as I can. You got a bunch of Mario ones, you got a Yoshi one with the touchscreen. In this game, again, just like Zombie U and Splatoon, it only is, you know, whatever's on TV, it's not on the gamepad. Obviously, this makes great use of the, you know, Wii U gamepad, because there's some of them, like, like the Yoshi game, having to draw with a pen and get Yoshi to go to a certain spot, specifically. Um, some of the games are only on the gamepad as well. Sometimes you may not get anything on the TV. Like with the Zelda game, which is probably my favorite one. But there's two of them because it's not only compatible with this, but it's compatible with the Wiimote and Wii Motion Plus. So you get sword fighting, or with this, you get the bow and arrow shooting. It's tons of fun. The music sounds great, just like the original Zelda Link to the Past. So it's got a lot of great nostalgic value to this game, and it's, that's what it's really for. Nostalgic gamers that grew up with classic Nintendo franchises, and I only scratched the surface there. Yeah, you got a Metroid one, you got um, a Zero game, you got a Pikmin game, which is another one of my favorites in this collection. You got 
tons of them. I mean, you got, of course, the ones that are only two player, I can understand, because it's about one player going and hiding, which is pretty much a game of hide and seek with the Mario and Yoshi one, and then there's a Luigi's Mansion like one where one player has to go hide and Luigi has to find them with the flashlight. Yeah, like the old scaredy cat that he is. So, yeah, it's definitely a great collection, but as I said in the review for this game, it would be really nice if there was an online multiplayer option, don't you think? But, don't let that get you down. It's definitely worth playing, and I definitely would check it out. Alright, and now, the number one game that I think is the best on the Wii U. Which one haven't I mentioned yet? How about Super Smash Bros. on Wii U? Yeah! Alright, I already reviewed this one, so I ain't got much to say, but I guess I'll say it. It's a fighting game. Pick a player, classic Nintendo character, or, well, third-party character, because obviously we're at the point where other non-Nintendo characters are taking part in this brawl. Yeah. I would say this one is actually better than Brawl, but still not as good as Melee, but it comes very close. Yeah. I mean, this one took a while, and obviously there's also a 3DS version, which has all the same character rosters, but obviously I knew this one was because it released a month after the 3DS one was going to be extra polished, because, of course, with the big stages like the Hyrule Castle and so forth, that was, you know, going to be much easier to play on a bigger screen TV. And yes, of course, again, it's, you know, whatever's on TV is on this screen at the same time. And, well, obviously it's easier to control, and there's a lot more to offer. There's, of course, online multiplayer to making a return, as well as local multiplayer. I mean, the ideas are endless with this. I can go on and on with this, of how great the soundtrack is, the gameplay levels, most of the returning characters, like the Mario characters, Mario, Bowser, you got Donkey Kong, uh, Peach, you got uh, new Nintendo characters, you know, uh, making their debut, like the Duck Hunt Dog, yes, that infamous laughing Duck Hunt Dog that I'm sure you wanted to shoot you with your NES light gun after laughing at you after missing the duck. You got, of course, uh, Little Mac from Punch-Out, Rosalina from Mario Galaxy, you got other third-party characters making their debut. Of course, you got the return of Sonic. Um, you got Star Fox making a return. Kirby, Meta Knight, DDD. Um, you got new characters like Mega Man, uh, Wii Fit Trainer. I mean, you got Pac-Man. Oh my god, I can just go on and on about this. And of course, they even got the courses in there, like the Pac-Man stage. You got the course from Yoshi's Woolly World, which didn't even come out when this game was released. Yeah. You got, of course, the Mario Brothers U stage, you got um, tons of stages, the Duck Hunt stage, so there's a great touch of nostalgia in this game as well as some new graphics, and it, it mixes it so well, to say the least. I mean, it's just... Go yeah, of course you don't have the long Embassy Adventure mode like you did in Brawl, but I'm fine with that because it was long and lengthy, but I think a little too long, to say the least. But this game has a lot of mini-games and stuff that'll keep you busy for a long time trying to unlock characters and music and stages and so forth. You got the stage creator, and of course you got DLC, which got, you know, stages making a return from previous installments, like, of course, the Peach's Castle and so forth, which I'm not really too crazy about that. I think they should have just left it in there. It felt like ridiculous cash grab. But of course you got new ones as well with uh, other characters that they included, like, um... You got Meowtzu from Pokemon, you got Ryu from Street Fighter series, and even freaking Bayonetta. Hell, you even got the Mario Maker course as well. I mean, talk about awesome. So, not much to say there. This is the number one reason, in my opinion, why you should own a Wii U. So, that's my list right there. All I could say is, you've done well, Wii U. Happy gaming, everyone.